It is with a great privilege that I introduce our keynote speaker, Mr. Glenn Grunwald. Glenn took over the helm as McMaster's Director of Athletics and Recreation in September of this year. After playing basketball for the legendary Bobby Knight at Indiana University and winning a national championship in 1981, Glenn earned a law degree from Northwestern University and headed back to Indiana to earn his MBA degree. He's been general manager of the NBA's Toronto Raptors and New York Knicks, and he's been the president and CEO of the Toronto Board of Trade. We were very excited to welcome Glenn to the McMaster family in September and look forward to hearing his plans for McMaster's competitive and recreational student athletes. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Glenn Grunwald. Well, thank you all for coming today. The first thing I wanted to do is give you a weather report for Saturday, okay? If there's any fair weather fans here, we're going to have real football weather. It's going to be about seven degrees, partly cloudy. So if you're a fair weather fan, we're going to have fair weather. So I hope to see you all there. <laughs> and speaking of media reports, you know, since I've been at McMaster, we've received a fair bit of media attention uh, about my arrival here. And in fact, a week and a half ago, uh, there was a big story on the front page of the Globe and Mail sport, sports section about me. And it was a nice and uh, well-meaning article, and I appreciated the kind words and everything from McMaster. And unfortunately, I felt that the, the focus of the article was wrong, it was misplaced. To me, the focus should have been on McMaster's outstanding student athletes and on an athletics and recreation department that is clearly one of the best in this country thanks to the work of my coaches, my colleagues and predecessors, and key Mac supporters that a lot of them are here today. And I see a table over there with lots of them, David and Ron, Jerry. So you know who you are, and thank you all for that. One of the things the Globe and Mail didn't do is didn't even really mention what a great program we had. It didn't mention that 12 of our 14 varsity sports that played this fall were ranked in the top 10 in the nation. We talked about our, our women's rugby team winning the Ontario Championships, our runner-up in both the nation and Ontario for our men's soccer team. Didn't mention that our, our women's and men's uh, volleyball teams are defending Ontario champions. And even though I asked them several times, it didn't mention that McMaster is a top 100 ranked university in the world. I could go on, but you get my point. The question that's always asked me by the media is, is too often, why on earth would you leave the NBA to go to a Canadian university? <laughs> and all I can offer in answer to that question about why I came to McMaster is my story. It's a story of my love for sports, a story of how important I think sport is to community building and building our future leaders, a story of my affection for this adopted country of mine. So I'm pleased to share it with you here today with my fellow members of the McMaster family. I first moved to Canada almost 21 years ago to this day. My old friend and teammate at Indiana University, Isaiah Thomas, who was an all-star in the NBA, was announced in May of 1994 as a part owner and general manager of the new NBA expansion franchise, Toronto Raptors. John Bitov, who I had known briefly as a student at Indiana University, was a co-majority owner of that franchise, and he had called me as a reference for Isaiah. So I gave Isaiah a good reference, but I also volunteered to John and Isaiah that I would be interested in working with them in, in this new uh, NBA franchise in Toronto. I guess he liked my suggestion. So when I arrived there, there were about 20 employees at the Raptors, and there was a lot of work to do in a lot of different areas. I ultimately assumed a title that I still think is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest title in any business as the Vice President of Business and Legal Affairs and the Assistant General Manager of Basketball Operations. <laughs> now, one of the reasons why I was excited to join the Toronto Raptors was that I believed it was going to be a huge, huge success. I had just spent four very difficult years with the Denver Nuggets, a franchise that was in a small market, was rebuilding team with a lot of losing records. It played in a small, out-of-date arena, and the Denver franchise was terribly undercapitalized. It was a difficult time there. There were a number of layoffs 
and changes in leadership and ownership. The Nuggets were a tough place to work, but we turned it around. The Raptors, on the other hand, looked like a no-brainer. The GTA was a larger and more affluent market than Denver. A new arena was going to be built in downtown Toronto, a new arena with all the revenue streams from luxury suites, signage, club seats, and food and beverage sales that are necessary for a pro sports team to be successful. The newspaper reports I read at the, all the time talked about the long waiting list for Raptor season tickets, over 18,000, and corporate spiners, sponsors were, were lining up to partner with the Raptors and affiliate with the NBA. Things in Toronto looked like it was going to be easy and very profitable. Well, soon after I arrived and started working at the Raptors in our original offices on 20 Bay Street, I realized that things were not quite as rosy as I had originally thought. In fact, I called my wife at the time and told her, maybe we should take our house in Denver off the market and just stay there for a little bit. <laughs> you see, the expansion agreements uh, between the NBA and the Raptors had required that the team sell 12,500 season tickets before December 31st, 1994. And when I arrived in November of that year, the team had only sold about 8,000 season tickets, and we had a little over a month to meet the December 31st deadline. And although the Raptors had a long list of people that were interested in buying a Raptor tickets, it was proving difficult to convert that interest into actual sales. Similarly, we were running behind on the required level of sponsorship and advertising revenue commitments, and securing a suitable place for a new, new arena without the cooperation of the Maple Leafs, and then obtaining financing for that construction was proving to be very problematic. We were running up against the deadline there as well. So I called Joe Litvin, who was an executive with the NBA who I had built a, a, a good relationship with in Denver. He was the executive in charge of the expansion process, and I expressed my concerns to Joel. Joel assured me that the NBA was going to work with us to make sure that the Raptors would be successful. He also told me I'd better get busy selling tickets and sponsorships. <laughs> well, with those assurances from Joel, uh, Joel, I called my wife, said, OK, put the house back on the market. Let's move to Toronto. So we all at the Raptors worked very hard those next couple of months, and we got creative. We secured the site of the old postal building uh, on Bay Street in downtown Toronto. We also secured the support of key corporate sponsors, most notably Air Canada. You may have heard of the Air Canada Center and the Ford, Ford Motor Company of Canada. We entered into a creative sponsorship and ticket resale agreement with Shoppers Drug Mart that allowed us to satisfy our season ticket sales obligation. Now, what did I learn from that Toronto Raptor experience? Well, for one thing, I learned that it's never as easy as it looks, that it's always going to take a lot of hard work, creativity, and cooperation. And that approach, hard work, creativity, and cooperation, is what I'm taking to my new role here in Hamilton. And I also learned a lot about community. The Raptors are now celebrating their 20th anniversary, and I would argue the Raptors are now a strong part of their community. I remember fondly the first game that was played by the Raptors on November 3rd, 1995 at the Sky Dome. Yes, I still call it the Sky Dome. <laughs> For me personally, it was a culmination of a year of hard work and sacrifice. For some of my co co-workers, it was much longer and harder slog. And for basketball fans in the GTA, it was something that they had waited for much longer and with great anticipation. So I was sitting in the stands of Skydome that evening, and it was an electric atmosphere. A record crowd of 33,306 people packed the place. The Raptors won that game, but to me, the most memorable moment was not the player introductions, not the first jump ball or the first basket made, or the buzzer signaling the first victory in franchise history. The most memorable moment for me, and I think most of the people in Skydome on that night, happened earlier that evening. Well, what would that have been? You may remember that on October 30th of that year, four days before the first Raptor game, there was a referendum in Quebec, seeking political independence and national sovereignty for that province. Polls preceding the election reflected that the yes vote was likely to win. The separatists were probably going to win. And three days before that vote, a huge unity rally was held in Montreal, with over 100,000 Canadians from outside of the province in attendance, pleading with Quebecers to, to vote no and remain part of Canada. I remember seeing those buses 
leave downtown Toronto packed with people, Canadians that were passionate about their country and determined to preserve it. A record number, 94% of registered voters turned out for that referendum. I remember watching the returns that night on TV and saying to myself, what is going on? How could this be happening to a country as strong as Canada? As we all know, the no vote narrowly carried the day by less than 1%, and the referendum failed. Quebec remains a vital and distinct part of Canada, and for that we can all be thankful. But now returning to those opening ceremonies on that first Raptor game on November 3rd, my thoughts at the time while I was sitting in the stands was about basketball, the excitement of our first game. That was until the Canadian anthem was played and was sung by the bare naked ladies. And the crowd sang along loudly and proudly, and I was reminded how close a call Canada had had. But then it went to a whole different level when they switched to the French lyrics. The crowd roared its loudest and most heartfelt roar of the day, and to me, that is the most memorable moment of the first Raptors game. The night was an il illustration, one of many I've had in, in my life, of something I had actually learned a long, long time before. It was something I had learned before I ever became involved in the NBA, before I ever played for the Bobby Knight at Indiana University. And it's something that any of you who have been involved as athletes, coaches, officials, volunteers, parents, fans, know very, very well. Sports teams can bring people together and help build and strengthen our communities. In the case of that magical first Raptors game, there had been no previous opportunity for Canadians to assemble and celebrate the continued unity of Quebec within Canada. There was no unity rally after the referendum for Canadians to, to, to come together as a nation. That first Raptor game provided the first opportunity after the referendum for Canadians to unite and celebrate their nation. And that's why I'm here, because I know what sport can do for a, as a community force. I wanted to get back to that. I wanted to get back to Canada, my adopted home, and I wanted to give back to Canada. And I wanted to do that at a place where sports was a priority, but not the only priority. So that's why I'm at McMaster, and that's why I'm proud to say I'm a marauder. I'm here because I want to contribute to the kind of personal development opportunities that I had as a student athlete. I look at Mac students like Chris Pizzetta from our football team. He's a leader of one of the country's best teams, but he recovered from two devastating knee injuries and made himself into an honor student in economics and geography. How can you not feel good about helping someone like Chris in some small way in his journey in life? And I'm here, about th here because of the importance of sports to communities. The example of that night at Skydome is just one of many examples I have in my life. Sport brings people together in, to share in every possible emotion, triumph, disappointment, joy, and brotherhood. Think of those ceremonies we saw at the NHL games in the wake of Corporal Cirillo's death at the National War Memorial. Think of the way Mac's two previous Vanier Cup runs united our campus in the, in the Hamilton community. Many people talk to me today about the, high, uh, about the Sky Dome and how it was overrun by a sea of maroon that evening. Think of the way an intramural team in basketball or inner tube water polo or dodgeball can bring together a student group, a residence floor, or a network of friends or colleagues. And finally, I'm here because sports can build pride in communities and communities can build pride in sports teams. Look at the Raptors this past, this past spring and now this fall. The fan support at the Air Canada Centre and outside the ACC in Maple Leaf Square or what is now known as Jurassic Park. That was the talk of all the TV analysts in the United States. I know that the same sense of community is here at McMaster, on our campus in Hamilton, and throughout the national and, and, and even global McMaster family. At a world-ranked university like Mac, there are great things happening everywhere all the time, in classrooms, labs, research institutes, community projects, entrepreneurship programs. But 3,000 people do not gather to watch a Canada Research Chair review data. It's incredibly rare that elementary school students stop our top undergraduates after a class to ask for an autograph. And Mac students don't paint their faces and organize cheers and chants in anticipation of the release of the New World University rankings. <laughs> but this stuff does happen in sports. 
Sports builds community in ways that very few other things can, and that connection between community and sports, between community and student athletes, is something that has been at the very heart of my sport experience for decades. It's what inspired my interest in being an AD long before there was an opening at McMaster. There is something magnetic about athletes who compete for the love of sport, as our student athletes at McMaster surely do. Our athletes don't receive full scholarships, and any financial support they do get works out to something far below the minimum wage, particularly when you count the hours they put in over the summer and during the school year. Our coaches are in the same boat, especially our OUA sport coaches who are volunteers in, or near volunteers and whose stipends are minimal compared to the time and effort they invest in our student athletes. It's the love of sport, it's the impact in our community. If I can be a part of that, if I can play a role in inspiring alumni, corporate partners, and community organizations to increase their support of our student athletes, then I can't imagine a better job or a better place to be than right here. If I can help recruit the investment to build the sports systems to keep our varsity athletes competitive, which I believe we have an obligation to do if we're going to field teams, and also help empower them to achieve excellence both on and off the field, then I feel like my work has some real value. At the biggest American football and basketball schools, only a tiny fraction of those student athletes end up with a viable career as a professional athlete. And only the absolute cream of the crop gets contracts that's larger than our annual budget in athletics. Everyone else is competing for the love of the sport, for the learning experience, for the relationship with teammates, for the fans. Everyone else is competing as part of a community, whether it be their team, their school, their city. And I see my job as helping build that community by getting people like those of you in this room to support McMaster Athletics and Recreation. It's a job that I'm very honored to do. It's a job I will be proud to explain to anyone who wonders why I'm here. It's a job where I deal more with student athletes and volunteer coaches than I do with player agents and eccentric owners. <laughs> it's a job that matters. So from where I sit, coming to McMaster makes a whole lot of sense. To me, the right question to ask, why on earth would you wouldn't want to come to McMaster University? Thank you. Are you doing questions?